So we're going to start with abstract art, lesson one, the history of abstract art. Um, the first thing to consider is what is abstract art? So these paintings here, could you consider why they might be abstract or not abstract? This one here is painted by Kazimir Malievich and this one by Wassily Kandinsky and this one by Jean Miro. Um, all three very famous abstract painters. Um, basically, abstract art is pure form, so pure line, form and colour without anything figurative in it. So in this one you can see these images here a bit like boats and here might be fish or sunshine. If you can recognise images, so imagery within a picture, that's called figurative art and figurative art is images of things we recognise. Abstract art has nothing we, we recognise in it other than shapes and colour and line. So you can use geometric shapes like squares and um, triangles and circles or organic shapes and lines like curves and more organic forms. And you can use very textured surface or very flat, um, so any type of colour. Abstract art has no recognisable imagery. It is just geometric shapes and organic lines and colours. It is a way of representing feelings without images in the same way that um, music can. So have a go at watching this video now, which is about how Wallace Kandinsky saw music in colour and line. So he had a thing called synesthesia where he could actually um, see music. So he'd listen to music and he'd see colours and lines. It's a good video and you can find it on the KS3 homepage. Then I'd like to go on to the history of Western art because it's quite interesting if you look at ancient art that was done thousands of years ago, you can see that it was still figurative. When we create art, we tend to create things that are figurative, that represent something from our lives. These cave paintings were obviously of animals and hunting trips, and lots of ancient art was of people and figures. We tend to draw people more than anything because that's what we look at. The classical art was very realistic art, and art continued in that vein right the way through the Renaissance, through the Baroque period, very realistic. We did have sort of romantic imagery, um, like this one by Constable, these landscapes, but it was still very realistic in, in nature. It wasn't really until the end of the 1800s when photography was invented that art started to change and the um, painters thought, well, maybe I could do something a bit different. If photographs can produce some images of the world in a very realistic way, maybe we could do something different with art. And so Monet and the Impressionists started representing colour and light with lots of dabs of paint. And then the post-Impressionists like Vincent van Gogh went on using the lines of their paintings and the thickness of the paint and using lots of expression um, in the way they painted. So it became less realistic slowly. And then the Expressionists, they were even more about feeling and less about reality. And Picasso took that even further and created cubism, which was then beginning to look at the geometric shapes within nature and looking at all sides of an object at all at the same time. And that led on to the first abstract art. And people like Kandinsky, who were trying to find something pure in art, so not worrying about representing what we see, but more how we feel, just pure line and colour and shape, and somehow creating a spiritual experience in art when you do that. This was very shocking to all the people at the time. No one in the Western world um, was creating abstract art until Kandinsky um, produced his first paintings. And lots of other artists soon created their own abstract pieces, but the public were 
hugely outraged by this kind of work. So Kandinsky was the first. This is one of his the first recorded abstract paintings, which was 1910. As it says here, the bold portrayal of vibrantly coloured spots, smears and lines, it forgoes all visual reference to objective reality, so it has nothing that we recognise in it anymore. This painting freed artists from the bondage, so from being tied to have to paint subject matter, and it invited us to engage with painting in an entirely new way. Malievich continued along that vein. He was trying to get to a spiritual place with his paintings as well. This picture was believed to signify a realm of higher feeling, a utopian world of pure form that was attainable only through non-objective art. And Miro, he um, painted very colourful, interesting little objects and shapes. They're almost figurative, some of them. He didn't consider himself to be an abstract artist. He was just very, very hungry. And when he came back, he used to hallucinate all these little images on his walls, I think from, from the state of hunger. And so he used to paint all these little images that he used to see and hallucinate. Jackson Pollock... Um, in the 1940s, he started creating these very dynamic, um, very textured paintings. And he added all sorts of things, so it says here, like coins, cigarette butts and other random bits from his studio. And he became known for this style of art where you, you can throw the paint and it's true expression of movement. The technique is creating the feeling of the of the painting. Mark Rothko, so he was really interested in colour and how it affects our emotions. So his paintings are massive. And I think you can walk into a space and really be immersed in just the simple colours that he creates and experience the mood that he's trying to portray. And Mondrian, here's a very famous, you may have seen this style of art. He worked out a way of purifying all the things he saw around him into just form, colour and line. And he used simple, bold, primary or secondary colours and this white squares and black lines. Just as an example of how Mondrian worked, you can see the lines in this tree. I mean, these are organic shapes because obviously this is a tree, but you can start to see how you've got the black outlines almost if this was a silhouette and these squares starting to form. So if you look at the next slide, you can see his journey of how he started painting trees and slowly as he started painting them in silhouette, he could see these lines, these geometric lines start to form. And bit by bit, you can see um, how he evolved his work into this really simplified vertical lines and horizontal lines. And he started to simplify the colours as well until eventually he ended up with these pure abstract pieces. Picasso did um, had this similar journey from very realistic drawing and um, painting um, to slowly becoming more expressive. He was really going um, for colour, form and expression and less about realistic figurative drawing. Instead, he was really trying to um, express a feeling in his painting. This slide is a very good example of how Picasso progressed from a, quite a realistic drawing of a bull and slowly making it more stylized, just finding a kind of more geometric shapes within that and slowly beginning to simplify and flatten that image. So it no longer looks 3D like the first one with all of the tonal variation. It, that tonal var variation is just defining the shapes now. And he takes it all the way to this purest and most simple form. And it is a way of abstracting objects. 
So what we're going to do in the next video is take an image so of a creature. So I'd like you to draw an image of a creature, just a simple line drawing, and then take those shapes that you see in that image and place them in various places around the page to create an abstract drawing and then you can colour it in and create your own abstract piece.